going to wreck! You see Brian's face? He has a hangover. He's been drinking all night last night. <laughs> we are on our way to go see Nick Maxwell. Nick. He's going to talk to us about his XL helicopters, the B2 and the Wraith. He's going to help us with some setup stuff. Brian uh, is practicing F3C for this coming year nationals, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. All right. We're going to invite you along with us. Yes. All right. Join us. Join us. making a bet whether you would have your Futaba shirt on or not. I lost the bet. I want to Oh, the Nick Maxwell production. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Nick? How you doing, man? Nice to see you too, brother. Oh, do, do you have a, a very vicious dog? No. Oh, okay. We don't mind. Okay. <laughs> oh, Nick. Wow. Is your real name Nicholas? Yeah. Does your mom call you Nicholas? Uh, yeah, son, yeah. That's... <laughs> this is amazing. Thanks. That's a beautiful shop. You know who else used to have a shop like this? Um, he used to work at OS, uh, Steve... Steve Helms? Steve Helms. Steve's was, Steve was a little different than this. This was... <laughs> Steve's was like a, a house. <laughs> right, right, right. It, it was, I remember it was just really big. It was like... Yeah. So you don't have many people here. No? So we're very privileged to be here. <laughs> I mean, come on. Let's, let's <laughs> there's, there's lots of people who have been here come out and fly and stuff like that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if, if somebody ever wants to come out and fly. Has Jason been here before? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Go fishing in the pond. <laughs> there's fish in here. Yeah. Have you caught any from here? Before? Me? No, I don't really fish. I feed the fish for everybody else, though. So I go out there and I feed the catfish dog food. So don't you feel bad when people fish? Because then they're like catching your pets a little bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's an activity. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Oh, so you like Mac? Yeah. Yeah, I'm an Apple guy. You're an Apple guy? Yeah. Well, I like you even more now. I'm an Apple guy. <laughs> he is not an Apple guy. <laughs> well, well, you're like, I have some stuff around boot camp, so. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because all of the time I said, you know, you got to. See, yeah. So I have, I have a separate um, PC laptop that I use, you know, stuff to, you know, download because everything's like PC compatible. But few things you can kind of get around on Mac with. But uh, you know, I started on Mac when I was like eight years old, so mm -hmm. I just started there and never back. Yeah. yeah. So Oregon Trail was cool. I always remember playing that on those iMacs. <laughs> Whoa, you went way back. Colors and mix I thought that was fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. What's your dog's name again? Uh, Aurora. Aurora? Yeah. Not after the helicopter. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sure Augusta would probably like that. <laughs> 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 not, not after the helicopter. Okay. You make your own stuff here, it looks like. Yeah. So, actually, so speaking of Steve Helms, um, okay. when he passed away, obviously, Steve brought me down here to Huntsville. Yeah, so I work for Fatal full time. Right. Um, and uh, he hired me and, and brought me down there. Um, and actually, that laid in the middle where Steve. What? Shouts out to Steve Helms. Um, yeah. Some of the new guys, you probably don't know about Steve Helms, but he is, was the guy, uh, OS Futaba. Like if you got put on with Futaba, he was the guy who gave the blessing. He was de behind the development of all kind of motors, Futaba software, just he was the man pretty much. Yeah. So. Uh, so new, some of the new guys, if you don't know about that, look him up. He's, he's part of history, so. Nice. And who partly made this man himself as well, too. He go out for me as kid. Yeah. yeah. So. No, you're not going to make any mass-produced parts on here, but yeah. for, if I need to make little changes and stuff, I mean, these little Sherwin lays, it's uh, pretty accurate for okay. what they are. Yeah. So, so this is this a 3D printer I see right here? Yeah. So you 3D print stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So you're like literally a one-man business right now. Yeah. Um, 
so Mike Apollo uh, helped with the, he did the U boat. Uh, Mike Apollo? Yeah. Okay. Um, out of Virginia. Okay. But, uh, he made the he, he did the electronics, the my starter electronics. Oh, right. right. So, um, we haven't had any stuff for a while. Uh, okay. Um, and then some other people around town here that help quite a bit. Okay. For your 3D prints, it's kind of like a proof of concept piece that you put together? No, I use it on helicopters. You use time. it as well? Yeah, I Holy sold a cow. bunch of those, the, uh, the, the rigid tail pusher guys for Diablo. Yeah. I sold probably 150 sets of those what? things around the world. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I nice. Really, they, they just, I just put them on that thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, Very cool. Know that Very cool. Like, yeah, so so here's, here's, a, here's another question. Um, so we were talking about this because... Uh, Brian was like, well, now that he's Excel, he's probably going to redesign something. I was like, no, he's probably not going to redesign something like from the ground up that's already been out. He's probably going to make some changes here and there, some things, kind of tweak some things. Yeah. Um, are you kind of doing that? At the moment, no. Okay. Um, so the Spectre out of the box is just, that's how I've been flying it. Okay. Right. Um, the only thing I've done is put the fiber one and tear issue on. Okay. Oh, so it's sped it's it up. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I do okay. think that helped. I just kind of like the sound too. It sounds a little more aggressive. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay. Which I think that's a big thing now is, you know, before everybody wanted quiet helicopters, now, you know, the loudest one on the field is probably going. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so I like the way that, that sounds. Other than that, it's, I haven't really found anything I need to do. Um, I am going to work with Raw a little bit to do some frame stuff um, to maybe make the Spectre V2 be an F3C machine too. Really? Yeah. Um, so the head, the control geometry, all that's the same. So right. why have two different helicopters? Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I was going to ask you about. Is it, how do you pronounce it? The Wraith or Wrath? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I say Wraith because that's like a bird, right? Yeah. So I figure, okay, it's Wraith. I but... didn't even know the Wraith was a bird. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. Fictional or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the Wraith, that's why I said, well, you know, maybe Nick's going to help, you know, really fine tune that bird because you don't see a lot of it out there it's not really a popular bird That's right now true. you know so you know with nick backing it now and you know doing some fine tuning on it maybe it'll become a really popular f3c yeah i mean the f3c realm I'm, i know you know about this I'm, I'm i know about the discipline of it but i'm kind of getting more into it because now he's kind of getting into it and like really taking taking charge with it um, but I, I, I never heard of the Wraith, and there's these other birds too that are F3C kits that I've never heard of because mm -hmm. all I've flown is 3D stuff my whole career, I guess. So, yeah. um, so seeing the Wraith, I was like, oh, that's cool, you know, I like, you know, whatever. So, it's a little different, but you know, it's that type of discipline requires like crazy setup, like practice and practice and practice. I'm sure you know. Well, yeah, it, honestly, though, it's not that that impression that it takes all this crazy setup and all this really? stuff. I think that's kind of BS. Really? Um, you can fly F3C with the standard helicopter. That's no problem. Hold on. So, with the 3D setup, you can fly. F3. Yeah, all it is is control rates. The, the only wow. reason that the guys go a little crazy with the setups is because when you're trying to fly smooth and then you go to do aerobatics, you just need two different banks or conditions. Other than that, it's helicopter, it's helicopter. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, we had a gentleman that just, you know, like I said, competed, I believe, over in Europe a couple of months ago, one second place with the raw, mm -hmm. with the raw. That's great. So he set up a, a 3D machine in the raw yeah. to do F3C. So yeah, yeah. 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 that was awesome. Actually, my Wraith now has, that's in the fuselage has the entire 3D head on. So I didn't want to have two different rotor heads and two different stuff. Oh. So I put the entire thing. It's the same dampers. It's the same. Same it's everything. It's the same setup in my radio. So yeah, so I guess that just dispels what I just said. It's not crazy. It's just you. You. It's like anything. You can take anything to the extreme. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. If you want to, that's fine. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. Well, see, that's what's so crazy because I just got my thirty-two MZ, mm -hmm. and I'm going through the setup, and I have my program box. And I want to ask you about this later. I'll show you what I mean. But um, like now, there's no weirdness in the swash, mm -hmm. so you can dial. Literally all of that out. So it's like just smooth from top to bottom. And no just to V-Bar, because I love V-Bar. It's a great radio. Um, I just didn't find that you could really go in and tweak that much. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, it leaves you more power to control. Like when you know it's like, because sometimes you just fly through the stuff. It's like whatever, you know, I'm tick tocking and the tail's falling out or it's, it's going forward, elevated. Right. Now you can go, okay, now I can get this out. 
yeah. or I can die without. Mm -hmm. And I and I learned too, you can uh, turn the cycle to in, which is weird because when I go full elevator, I tend to get a little bit of aileron in there, so now I can either dial that out in the swash or dial it out mm -hmm. at the stick. So yeah, you just no. take the screw and adjust it. Right. Yeah. So I'm learning. Actually, I loosened the throttle a little bit, but other than yeah. that, a little bit. I heard if you hold your transmitter up, the whole thing just falls down. It does. Okay. <laughs> wow. That that's the only quirky thing that I have. But other than yeah. that, I just take out the box. I leave the springs the same. Wow. Yeah. All the Japanese man to put it together. He did a good job. Because I saw a picture of yours, and uh, I, I called Jason. I'm like Jason, because I'm losing the top. So I'm like, what is this? Uh, what is this thing here? I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. like, do I need to order something? So with my setup work, he's like, dude, that's the antenna. I'm like. Well, what is this? The black. Yeah, the black right here. It's, a, it's just heat shrink. The, it, the yeah. CGY comes with that. Oh, I see what you did. I see what you did. Like people use to hang pictures of on the antenna. Gotcha. What? Yeah. Oh, that is incredible. One of the Japanese guys does that. I saw that on Facebook. So where where did where do you get it? You just order it like it's just Walmart. It's mm -hmm. it's it's um. Uh, oh, you just pop it in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's no heat. Like it's just yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> insane, man! I can pretty much guarantee you anything in here you'll find can get at Walmart or Lowe's. Nick, so do you do you like the build process to build them helicopters? Do you enjoy it? A building a new one? Yeah. Tell the truth, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely a flyer. Yeah, you got to do it, and I, yeah. I, I actually like I like getting everything right, but it's never perfect. So yeah, so right. Okay. I just okay. like to get it together, and then once it flies and it's flying good, then you yeah. can kind of forget about the stuff that you didn't. I am definitely a tinker once it's built. Like, yeah. So I'll take the head apart four times in a day to try to do Oh, wow. Um, but from the ground up, no, I hate it. Yeah. I fly the same one over. The Diablos that I had were all the original ones that I built. I never built new ones since I was Gotcha. I just gotcha. kept putting new parts on. Do you, do you have a guy who builds your kits for it? No. No, I do. <laughs> I mean, I don't keep that many helicopters. I mean, what you see is what I've had. Right, 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 right. And I, there's no reason for me to have more than you. So I'll have another FBI machine. Yeah. Okay. But past that, there's those four helicopters, and that's it. See, that's beautiful, because that's been a huge debate at our field forever. When, when we, matter of fact, when I first met Sean about a year and a half ago, it was like, you just need one bird. That, that was Sean's mentality. Yeah. Just one bird. Practice and learn on that one bird, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then like, well, what happens if you crash? You know, you got to wait for a long time before you can get back in the air. So at least have two or three birds. And so we kind of all sat on that mentality that, yeah, let's, we bring two or three birds out to yeah. the field in case someone puts something in and you got something else to fly. But you want something around the same class, the same size, so you don't have, you know, these, these differences between the birds when you're yeah, flying. When I first birds. met you, you had like a nano all the way up to. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like <laughs> like, and this one guy used to come to the field, like he would never fly. He would just have uh I forgot the guy's name. He was just Bryant. Like, I remember yeah, he, Bryant. He just, yes. He used to line up like maybe like ten helicopters. Yeah. And just kind of watch us fly, and I'm just kind of like you know, you, you know, we gotta fly. But you know, <laughs> everyone's in this hobby for their own specific yeah. reasons. It's like classic cars. Most people don't drive them. He's gonna right. really show it. <laughs> exactly. These building mats. <laughs> yeah. How do I get one? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know, Mr. Futaba? <laughs> I, I used to go to Japan to, to do testing and stuff like that pre-COVID. Okay. Um, and I would always just pick them up when I was there. That's a Japanese marketing. Yep. Yeah. JP. We tried. Yeah. So when I was still managing Futaba, we tried and tried and tried to find that foam mat. Mm. And in Japan, just sometimes has products that you, you just can't find here. Yeah. yeah. No, and totally. believe it or not, to import that. So like I thought, okay, well, let's sell them in the United States. Let's uh, buy them from Futaba Japan and sell them. But they have a really big tax on they call it textiles and stuff, and mm -hmm. that fits under. It. So that's why F the Futaba USA has never had like yeah. the Japanese shirts and stuff. It yeah, costs a fortune to get those things over here. Yeah, I've been on on the Futaba site uh, pretty pretty much every day, twice a day for the past three maybe three weeks. <laughs> and I've been trying to get a t-shirt mm -hmm. and they've just been sold out, man. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I can't, can't oh. find them, so. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. It's I, COVID. I don't know anymore. Well, yeah. so you, you're not with Futaba at all? Yeah, yeah, so I'm still a consultant pilot um, and I work with uh, Futaba Japan on development. I have a, an agreement for them so I can do that. Oh. Um, okay. But I no longer manage the business. So previously from 2017 to, I guess 2018 to mid-2020, mm -hmm. or October 2020, yeah, yeah. Um, I was the division manager. Okay. 
So I managed the shipping, the warehousing, the marketing, the service center, the oh wow, all that. When I joined Fataba, I had joined just as product development, and actually I was a pilot. Right. So it was a full time job as a pilot, product development. Right. And then when Habico went bankrupt, yes, this twenty seven year old got thrown into <laughs> having to try to figure out how to do all that. Basically, CEO hat and. Kind of cut away yeah. fat, get stuff more lean and efficient, and yeah, hired mm -hmm. all the people, came up with all the fun. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Managed it to that must work. have been very stressful for you. That's why I did not really fly much those years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the last time I really flew hard or really practiced was 2017, because I was businessman instead of yeah. pilot. So now that you're back in where you feel more comfortable, yeah. we're going to see the old Nick. Yes. Yeah. So I, yes. I would say for probably the last four years, I gave about 15%. Mm. The last time I really gave a good effort was the World Championships in 2017. And now thanks to XL, uh, joining them, and I, I do have another uh, job as for an aerospace company here in town. Right. But they are very flexible, so... I can kind of get back to doing more like what I like. I That's still love awesome. Satava. I mean, I absolutely would do anything for him. Right. Um, but the manager business side is not for me. So basically, you're you're telling all uh, uh, pilots out there who will be competing that Nick Maxwell is back, <laughs> and they better watch. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. He's back, kids. He's not messing around. Yeah. Like, that's it. Okay, game over. <laughs> Pretty sure those kids will still kick my ass. <laughs> I don't know. So wait, you've won. You pretty much have you ever won the XFC? Yeah. How many times? Uh, twice. All right. So XFC, and then they have the uh, the nationals. You've won like a million times. Yeah. Seven or eight nationals now, and had three yeah. masters back in the day, 2010. Which mm -hmm. now I guess the names changed to Heli Masters. Now it's Global 3D. Global 3D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So pretty much every competition out there, you have won. Except for the F3C World Championship. And are you going for that? Yes. Uh, well, it was actually supposed to be in Romania last August. Oh, wow. got canceled. So now okay. it's going to be in the United States in 2023. Yep. And then the European Championships will be in Italy this year. And then Global, Netherlands. And hopefully yeah. they have Rotor Lab again. I, wanted, I really wanted to go back to Global 3D because it would have been 10 years since I had won the 3D Masters, which I guess is kind of the same contest. Right. But of yeah. course, with COVID, it got canceled. Totally kind of messed up everything. Yeah, so. yeah, of course I did. Yeah. I'm excited, man, because um, I didn't really know about XL until this guy told me about it. He's like, man, I've been looking at this XL uh, Spectre. I'm like, man, get the crap. Get out of here. That's crap. I'm like, get the raw, man. The SAV raw. So then I, I, I go to LA and uh, and I see a friend of mine in the field. I'm just like, what is that? I'm, I'm driving up. He's just ripping it up. I'm like, what is that? He's like, dude, it's a Spectre. And I was like, no, you can't. Really? He's like, yes. So I come back. I'm like, Brian, that Spectre is crazy. So I looked at it. It was set up, the job, like everything. And that was the, that was the one, not the two. Yeah. So when then I got the one, I was like out of the box. like, And I'm not the setup guru, but I put it together per the instructions, you know, did my set, set up 0, 13, and 13, you know, set my head speed. Boom, and the hover, it just was locked in from like flight one. A buddy of mine was there. He was just kind of like, he was like, dude, is this the maiden flight? It looks like you've been flying this for a while. I was like, no. First flight just hovered, boom, locked in, did some, you know, some changes or whatever. But when the V2 came out, I was kind of skeptical because I was like, there's no way that this helicopter can fly better than it already does. And it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I don't fly for XL. I'm not like one of their reps. I'm yeah. not getting paid. It's just a really solid bird. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And the crash prices, I mean, a boom, what, like 10 bucks or yeah, 11, super cheap. you know, it's, uh, you're not afraid to fly it. Yeah. You know, if you put it in, it's not a big deal. No one wants to crash, but, you know, if you have a $1,300 bird with a carbon and then boom, yeah. it's like 70 bucks, you're like, you know, you just kind of like more gun shy. Yep. Not with this. I'm like, whatever, let's go. I'll yep. Send it. Yeah, I'm saying, man, I'm not scared to crash these things, man. Right. Because there's so, so few parts count and stuff. And the way you route the servos... It's, it's not hard to get to. No. no it's yeah. pretty much wire clips, take them all, unplug, boom, let's go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I had definitely gotten used to having all the wires hidden. And I, having flown the same thing for so long, I guess seven years ago, they didn't have helicopters that were quite this simple. And I, and I love the way they supply you with the servo horns. Yeah. So the geometry is just right yeah. there. It's just like you don't yeah. have to guess. There's no like, you can use other ones, but 
they work. Yeah. In the CGUI, I, everything is default except for flight style. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, a little flight style, that's just personal taste. Um, I think I changed the expo a little bit, but other than that, it's... <laughs> so we have to, I have to look at your setup. Um, yeah, yeah, well, you I know you, radio, you, you, know you always say that your models aren't anything really special and that you'll share them with anyone. Mm -hmm. So I can have your model. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Send pictures. Several people have asked for the settings, so if you have whatever you want. Okay, nice. Beautiful. So you heard it here first. So it's all in your thumb, so you're just a master at flying, is what you're saying. I think the big thing to get the helicopters really performing their best is you just make sure everything's neutral. And as long as everything's neutral, it's just kind of bound to fly good. Gotcha. The big thing is, you know, if you forget one little thing, and everything else is right, you might not ever get that. So if, if your swash plate's level, your zero degrees pitch, but your CG is, say you're super tail heavy, mm -hmm. well, you're, you're never gonna get that. But if your CG is zero, and, or if say you're, everything's level, but then your neutral collective is off, well, all your, and it's never gonna fly. Mm -hmm. So as long as all that stuff is just neutral, it should fly. No. Beautiful. Pretty, big things coming on the blade side of things. Okay. More sizes, stuff like that. Um, I just ship them out of here. So as you can see, I've got 20 sets over there that need to be shipped to somebody. Um, but that's good. I want to work on some more electronics. Definitely more kind of gearing towards what I really want out of an electronics, generally speaking. You know, gotcha. I really like Futaba stuff, so it won't be anything like that. But, okay. Um, more stuff like the, like Mike DiPaolo Yeah. Um, for, at Urge, I tried to kind of resell some stuff. I don't think that's really for me. Um, I think that the all-in-one shops like HeliDirect, they got that stuff, support them, go through go through companies like that. Um, so I probably won't stock stuff like that, but at FunFlies, I'd like to start bringing like one or two motors or one or two ESC. So if you're at a FunFly and you need a Fataba tail servo, hit me up. So you yeah. have the uh, BLS 276 SB. Yeah. I looked all over the planet, basically, <laughs> and couldn't find one, like, about a week ago. And uh, Chuck from, from Pete, he uh -huh. had one. He's like, I got one left, man. He's like, I don't want to sell it, but I'll sell it to you. I'm like, all right, cool, I'll buy it. But, like, they're out of stock everywhere. Really? I just, okay. Did you notice that? or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what is it? So, uh, is it maybe COVID or? Um, I, I don't know. Um, obviously, I'm not at the top every day anymore, so, right. uh, and I don't do the ordering anymore. Ah. Um, so, I, I don't know. Um, it could be, could be that. It could be slow ship times. I know boats. You know, Fataba is a massive company, and Fataba is so much more than helicopters. When you order product, I would say maybe ten helicopters is ten percent of that. When they ship stuff over to the United States, it comes over on a boat, mm -hmm. and you know it's full of car stuff. Cars, you would never believe how much car stuff is sold. I mean, cars is a huge market. It could be that you know they do boat shipments. It's not air. I think I think the manager, the new manager, is going to start trying to take some stuff by air, mm. um, which will help. Um, but if a boat is stuck at the dock in the customs, because mm, yeah. there are a lot of workers out there, it's just yeah. there. I don't know. This might be kind of personal, but did you get any blowback or any like, oh my god, that you left uh, minicopter? No, I, I won't say uh, blowback. Um, definitely the XL people have all, been, have all been super supportive. Everybody has been very, very supportive. Of course, when you have been with a brand for a while and you've kind of helped evolve the product a little bit, um, I'll be honest, we really didn't do much with the helicopter. Um, minicopter was pretty much the same way. I took it out of the box. I had a few little parts that I made for myself. But other than that, I mean, so I think GERD and, and minicopter are Perfectly fine, perfectly happy. Um, I know Chuck in the U.S. I think he, you know, I think he wanted to continue. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it okay. seems fine. Everybody's been really supportive. No, but, yeah, yeah. Like, like when when I talked about um, this, is so funny when we talked to Urcha, um, you didn't bring up the XL thing, and I, I knew it was kind of you know you're waiting for the ink to dry, and there's things maybe you hadn't mm -hmm. you know figured out all the way, but. But uh, there was some talk and some chatter, and I'm kind of like, I think Nick is going to go to XL, man. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, Brandon Lee, he's like, he's not going to XL. I'm like, yes, he is. I just have this feeling, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so it turns out you went to XL. Um, but their roster of pilots um, globally is a... It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge, and they got some talent. Yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. So when you put the Michael Jordan of, you know, of competitions on that team, it's kind of like, 
you know, you guys are, you know, pretty unstoppable now. I mean, there's really no weak spots if you look at it. Yeah, I mean, the, the pilots that, that Ra has is amazing. It's an honor to join them and, and fly with them. Um, I know me, my butt kicked by Cam probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's going to be fun. I think my role will be a little bit more fitting into the more technical side. So maybe, you know, I'll still compete, I'll still fly a lot, I'm still going to practice. Um, but I'm going to try to really shove a lot of information out. Um, with Minicopter, it was a very small niche brand. Um, and for me, that was, honestly, that was a big reason of why I switched to is I was flying a helicopter that, that not everybody could go out there and, and get. Um, for Fataba, I think that me explaining something, oh, let's say you set up Fataba, the impression is, well, I don't have a DIY, I don't need that. Mm. You know, I absolutely love that helicopter. And I mean, it, I, like you said, it's, it's a little bit of a fear. It's an expensive helicopter. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're part of the company or not. If it's a nice piece of equipment, you don't want to go out there and crash yeah. it. <laughs> right. So I was looking for something that would kind of bring my flying to the next level to where I could crash and I could maybe relate a little bit better with customers on information like, oh, you know, on this helicopter, if you just run this setup, I can guarantee it's going to work. Where I think a lot of the guys that say, well, these are the numbers in Nick's Diablo, but that's not going to work for me in my line. Mm -hmm. If you're flying more mainstream helicopters, I hope that kind of is a little bit more cohesive with sharing information. It levels the playing field and the, you know, I'm in the music business. So like, you know, 15, 20, I started when I was 17 years old. So like back then, if you wanted to make music, you had to go to a studio. There was, there was very few home studios. And when I mean by home studios, they were like, you know, you, you had a couple pieces of key, uh, equipment. But now it's like, if you have a laptop and a MIDI controller, yeah. You can make smashes and music wherever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it kind of leveled the playing field. So it wasn't just these huge, like, producers, David Foster, or Jimmy Jim, Terry Lewis, and Babyface, and, 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 and all these others. It, it now opened up the playing field. So we all kind of, like, kind of met in the middle. So now it's like everyone has a home studio. Everyone can mix. Everyone can master. So now it's kind of like, you know, you have an easier product, mm -hmm. cost less. We can talk about things a little bit more easier. You can access these parts faster. Yeah. Um, it just it makes it less stressful. So, yeah. not yeah. saying that Diablo is stressful because I, I I bought yeah. one myself. So yeah, and and that's the thing. I don't think that by any stretch of the imagination that this is going to affect mini copter. Right. If you have a mini copter, you can also have this as a cheaper alternative, mm -hmm. and it's going to be the same performance. Right. So. Yeah, it's still the the mini copter is this nice German hand built helicopter. Mm -hmm. There's a place for it. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And not everyone's gonna fly that, and not everyone's gonna fly the XL, and not everyone's gonna fly the line. It's, it doesn't That's, matter. Right. Just get out there and fly and practice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that motor actually makes the same amount of power as a 4525. Oh. It's just a little bit different power. It's not gonna have quite as much torque because uh, it doesn't have the leverage. It can be as big. Right. But it'll. I think it governs real well. Okay. So that's, no, I know nothing about electric motors. That's one thing with George is when I went from nitro to electric, yeah. I instantly went to Scorpion. Okay. It actually, kind of a fun story. He sent me a message the other day. Uh -huh. He was actually the first guy in the United States to have Scorpion motors. Really? In 2007, there's a video on his YouTube that he came to Urcha, uh -huh. and he sent me these little motors for 450s. But, yeah. You, so, so you were the first one? The first one, and I think, you, uh, you might want to fact check me on this one, I think I might have been the first one to win a helicopter competition with Scorpion. What? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I absolutely love that stuff. Okay. And quite honestly, because I have only flown his stuff, I've never had to learn about it. Oh. I typically learn out of necessity. So if the tail rotor doesn't work, I have to learn how the tail rotor works, so that way I can fix whatever my problem is. Because his stuff works so good, I've never had to learn how it works. Wow, <laughs> nice. that's sick, bro. That's Just very cool. Just it out of the box and put it in there. But yeah, so this was this motor was basically just to fit. I had a little bit bigger, faster flying style than a lot of the guys, mm -hmm. um, and I always had issues finding governors that worked well. So mm -hmm. this motor governed real well, and it. So. Okay. It was a. I think the signature thing was just a way for him to say this is different than a forty-five twenty-five. Right. It's the same power. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, Brandon was telling me about this one. He's like, it put us, puts out the same power. And my mind was like, how can it, if it's, if it's designed different, 
but it doesn't matter what the design is, it's behind the equal sign and what, what it's doing with numbers is what matters. Yeah, electric is, yeah. So let me ask you this. I felt your belt back here. Is it broke? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mine is extremely tight. And this no. is this is just kind of like, well, no, no worries, no big deal. Kind of like not as tight as mine. Is there a sweet spot or? Yeah, there is. I just said it. I'll just spin the head until it feels good. Um, oh, so, so you spin the head and then, then, then you like it. Adjust it, yeah, and then feel it and see, see what it does. I mean, this can't skip. So it's got this little idler here. I right. call it an idler. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is. Okay. That doesn't just put... So typically, if you have a support like that, it wraps around and it just gives more surface area around the pulley. Right. This is actually holding the belt on top of the pulley. So it really can't skip. Yeah, the, this drivetrain is super, super smooth. And then it's got this huge front pulley. So like the V1 had the small pulley. Right. You could probably skip the tail on that. Pretty gotcha. Easy. Okay. This huge pulley up here, that gives you your surface area. And then it's got like a typical tensioner up here where it just right. keeps that. And then the back here, the small pulley, because you can't, obviously you can't put that back there. Um, so instead he put that idler on there that rides on top of the belt. And I, I think it's super smart and you can see there's no material there it's not rubbing so it's it's yeah. only doing its job when the belt tries to pull up it doesn't sit there and hold drag on the belt oh, right. Right. And if you spin it it actually doesn't spin right 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 i noticed that before yeah. yeah so it's not even touching yeah it only spins if if the belt tries to lift up and it can only lift up then enough so that the tooth can't jump wow so he did their homework then yeah he's he's done some pretty cool stuff i mean the helicopter is stupid simple but yet the stuff that he's Put into it is like the way the reason why this boom works. So you say, okay, well, you know, this boom diameter is the same on lots of helicopters. Why, why can't I run boom sports? Or, you know, why can't I run at boom sports? He's spaced everything wide enough. It's right. The right support. Oh, it wouldn't flex if, it, if you tried to flex yeah. it. It's, it's such a big support system. Yeah, because yeah. they're so wide. Yep. Um, Got you. Instead of like normally, it's just kind of like this far apart. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's done a lot of great. Mm -hmm. The battery tray is awesome. I love how the battery tray ties into the upper frame, so it's super rigid. Mm -hmm. So all this mass down here doesn't really have any load or weight on it. Okay. The rate is in there, right? Yeah, in a few yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't have it on top, boom. Um, so we were talking about that as well. So with F3C competition, um, you always have a fuse, correct? Yeah. Okay, that can work against you. Yeah, they, they do not hover as well. The pot and boom hovers way better. But this just looks so much prettier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just gotten so used to looking at the bodies for that. that right. I, I just like having it on there. Okay. And and now it's affordable. I mean that, that fuselage, I, I forget what the cost exactly is. Okay. But you can get on RC Japan and order that exact fuselage from from RC Japan for cheap. Mm -hmm. So I, it all of a sudden the the Wraith and this Ernest and all of those stuff has made F3C completely affordable. Are you gonna switch over to uh, the battery trays that slide in and turn up? Uh, no, probably not. Yeah. Um, just cause I've got them all set up like Yeah, yeah, your creature <laughs> habit is kinda of like, you know, I got my plugs and everything. Yeah. Charged. Cause then you gotta switch over other stuff. He's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and for me, since I travel so much, that uh, if I show up somewhere and say my batteries do get taken, mm. I have to make sure that somebody else there has that same setup. Um, or at least with this, if it happens, I can just solder some 6.5 millimeter bullets on and... Good to go. Yeah, I always bring spares with me in case mm -hmm. it happens. Yeah, gotcha. I've shown up to several events and I have to go to a vendor like, I gotta buy a couple of stick back from you. Yeah. yeah, I was talking to Jason about that. I'm just like, how do you guys travel with uh, with batteries? And I, I didn't think you could. Um, but he's like, yeah, you gotta cover the milliamp and then you gotta tell them it's for a toy helicopter. You can't make a big deal out of it. And, yeah, that's all I did. I've never got my batteries taken away. Um, I've just had them lost before. Oh, man. Mm. <laughs> so, a couple times when I've tried to check them, I tell them, no, they got to stay with me. Right. And they say, oh, no, 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 you got to uh, check them or if my bag was too big to fit in the over compartment, something like that. Right. And then... So, you, you, you know, take the leads on the side as well? Away oh, from I didn't do that anymore. Really? No, I throw them in this book bag. <laughs> I throw them in this book bag next to my laptop. And when I get to the check-in, I take them out, I yeah. put them in their own container, okay. and I say, this is for a toy helicopter. I'm going to an event, and they go, oh, that's cool, my neighbor's got one of those. And <laughs> now, if you happen to be a stubborn person, mm -hmm. this is bad, I probably should have admitted to this, um, I tell them that the 6S is 6 volts. 
Mm. And you're in the plot. <laughs> or you could just draw a 6V on there and be like, six bolts anyway. Right? <laughs> Let them get to that conclusion themselves. When I have had everyone, I mean, it's been had hundreds of trips. I've had maybe one or two staplers where they're like, this is over the water. You have three, you're only supposed to take two. Mm. It's like, oh. gotcha. Wow. Really? Okay. Yeah. You've never <laughs> fallen on that thing, right? Ah, really? Oh, God, I fall on. So, I actually bought that from um, one of my employees that I had at the top. Uh -huh. The trails were trying to go through. I just didn't have any grip. Oh. And so I had to go on and start slipping. And the next thing you know, I guess I don't scoop my butt fast enough. I don't know what it is, but I'm underneath that thing. Oh. <laughs> 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 I, the buddy I went with, I work with, and the next day I said, I can't get out of bed. Yeah. So after I roll out of bed, I show up to work late. And I ain't never doing that again. No, I get it. I get it. So right now in your life, you step in, you've stepped back from the business side of it. Mm -hmm. You got back to your original love, which is flying helicopters, competing, learning, fine tuning. Niche products. Your niche that, products. Yeah, that business side. Yeah. Okay. You will be flying and competing more. Mm -hmm. And this is what you enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Do, for sure. do you ever sim? No. Um, actually, just a couple days ago, I downloaded AccuRC. Okay. It seems pretty good. Okay. Um, the only thing I use a simulator for is music flights. Uh, Anytime I have tried to learn a maneuver on the simulator, I gotta go freaking unlearn it in real life then, because whatever I did on the simulator is different than what the. Mm -hmm. And so. No, I always try everything first in real life, learn in real life, just go high. Um, freestyle, set maneuvers, all that is real life only. Music flights, I get the music timing and I mix the music on a simulator. Yeah, I gotcha. And then go out and practice. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. No, but no diss to who, whoever let, uses sims. Yeah, if you can do it, more power to you. Yeah. I just can't. That's what's weird. It's like some people adapt to sims, some people don't. Like for me, I'll get on the sim for like maybe five minutes to just figure out what the sticks will do. Mm -hmm. Once I figure that out, I, I can't perfect it there because it always feels completely different when you have a real helicopter with real gravity and real... Yeah. yeah. So. I, there's no depth perception on the simulator. Right. I yeah. can't tell if it's going in or out. Or mm -hmm. so. But mm -hmm. I, I, now I need to say that AccuRC, um, having flown that now for a couple of days, just playing around with it, it is significantly better than the real flight I had. I agree. I don't know what real flight version I had. It wasn't the latest. You probably had like maybe seven or something. If you don't really use them, because I think nine is out now, so you probably had like seven or eight or something like that. Anyways, I used that for a long time um, just to do the music stuff. And now with this AccuRC, I think maybe I'll try to do freestyles on that. Okay. But it, it is significantly better. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. You go in there and make the servos. They had Helix Blaze in there, so obviously before yeah. Evo. Um, I emailed the guy or text or um, message him. I said, "Hey, you want to put Revos in there?" And I asked him. I said, "If I send you a panoramic view of my backyard, can I have like a he didn't yeah. respond yet?" Nice. You fly airplanes too. Yeah, yeah, no, just for fun. Okay. And it worked. So actually, the company, the UAV company, I work for is mostly airplanes. Oh, okay, cool. Most airplanes are multi rotor. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So, so are you flying from top on their on the, with their stuff too, or is it as for the for the RC manual controllers and stuff? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I would love to go back full time to, to hobby. Okay. Um, I don't know if the industry can support it. Um, yeah. And I would like to focus a little bit more on the rotary side of UAVs and things like that. I think there is some, some need for that. The company that I work for seems real interested in that too. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I really want to see Nick Maxwell products grow and come out with more products. Cool. I believe are different. Yeah. We brought you something. But I want to bring it into you, so if that's okay. okay. Yeah. It's in the car. You got to get this expression, not me. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Exactly. So, <laughs> so I know what you think this is. You want to build a helicopter for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want you building a helicopter. Oh, okay. All right, so you, there you go. I'll let you open it. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's really important. I think you talk to Jason. Yes. <laughs> that is too funny. Yeah. yeah. So totally, I'm like, like I, I hit you up. I'm like, well, usually when you come to someone's house, you bring a bottle of like, you know, vodka or whatever they like. Yeah. And you're like, nah, I don't like that. I'm like, I know someone knows what he likes. Jason's like, get him some Jolly Ranchers, some orange soda, some monsters, and some other candies that he'll be fine. So, well, thank you very much. I'm sure you appreciate it. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. There it is. Very oh, and you're cold too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, so yeah. Let's get some uh, flights in, man. And then, uh, okay. Yeah. So to XL, XL, XL. Power, your relationship. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That too. So Brian wanted you have zero sugar. I don't know why he bought you that one. Um, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna put me on, on blast me like that? I put him on blast. But, but I made sure you got you some regular uh, sugar. Okay. So because well, I knew you'd get, you know. Well, thanks. That's sugar too drink. Funny. Maybe a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So well, we're stopping now. Though. Yeah, you're good. Now. So I gotta ask then, because yeah. I guess I haven't. I, I assume your music mixing music business. Yes. Okay. So yeah, like you do the mixing. For like the, oh no, I'm making from scratch. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so, so I have a studio, and if you come to Atlanta, we're gonna have a fun fly. We definitely okay. would like to invite you. Yeah, you come over to the house. I got like a full like keyboard uh, monitoring system, like mixing music software. Nice. The room's treated and stuff like that. So it's a whole other like realm. So wow. But yeah, I make it from scratch. So the kick drums, snares, guitars, bass, all that stuff. Then either I write it or I send it out. Someone else writes it. And then we sell it to labels, and then it gets on the album. And then once I get the artist's voice on it, then that's when I mix it. Or I have a mix engineer mix it, and we mix it together. Mm -hmm. Then we master it, it goes on the record, comes out on iTunes platforms, and sell royalties, and you make money. So Nice. Yep. So that sounds, that, that's a cool job. Well, I love it. I mean, I've been doing <laughs> yeah. it since I was 17. So uh -huh. that's, I'm not going to say that's all I know, but that's really in my wheelhouse yeah. of creating music video kind of editing things together getting things to flow to look right and uh -huh. all that's the sound of things so nice. yeah so that's just my thing do you like starburst yeah yeah oh, i'll eat any candy oh really so you're a candy guy that's it. Uh, yes so i'm allergic to tree nuts and peanuts so like you know the uh what are they i forget the different ones sneakers Reese's. Reese's. yeah okay candy oh yeah. okay yeah oh, okay and for whatever reason, this started. So Jason, Jason probably knows backstory. He just didn't tell you, but I used to get super nervous. He told me this. And so whatever it was, just that little bit of sugar would help my stomach. It would settle my stomach down. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it was just working like um, uh, what are those th the things you take for acid that you? Oh, uh, that's a reflux. Yeah, yeah. I think it just mean. it must have just having a piece of hard candy in there with a little sugar in it helps. Wow. Yeah. Stomach. Yep. I didn't even think you got nervous at this point. I think. Oh yeah. I think you you have to, if you care about something you have to get nervous. Yeah. If you don't yeah, care, then you don't get nervous. But. If you're not nervous, that means you don't care. Mm -hmm. From Nick Maxwell. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, I guess uh, what's the next here? I guess one flight on each, you know, and then we'll do your thing. We'll just watch it do it. Later. Okay. All right. Sounds good. You initialize that thing upside down? <laughs> yeah, because I don't have a switch on yet. So I just plug it in and then hold it. And it's it. okay? It doesn't matter. Even if you're moving it a little bit? Uh -huh. What? I thought it had to be completely still on a flat surface. No, flat huh. doesn't matter. Because, well, it might matter for rescue stuff. Okay. Um, if the flight control has a rescue. Gotcha. Okay. Everything good? Yep. Mm -hmm.
I like seeing that smack with the fuselage. You never see that. <laughs> oh, that roll is beautiful. It is. It's very nice. So with the race ball, compared to some of the other birds, you can feel some different characteristics about it. Practice what you hate to be the best at it. I think your hover was, uh, I don't know, maybe it could be a little bit more stable. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's GPS. <laughs> <laughs> Needs a rescue. I think you need a rescue mode. <laughs> no, Nick, who's the guy that comes in second to you that hates your guts? I don't think there is one. The, so <laughs> it's just the first place and that's it? No, because I've definitely gotten second plenty of times. Okay, who's the guy at third all the time? I've been there too. <laughs> so who's the guy in fourth is what I'm saying. You have a nemesis. Fourth, okay, I will be honest with you. Fourth place sucks. Because you're right there, you almost made the podium, and you're looking at those guys going, I'm a few points away from that one. Right, right, right. <laughs> and you're saying, uh, I don't think anybody, I, I hope that when the competition is over, it's over. And So there is one guy that popped into your head, you're just not going to say it, right? Is this correct? <laughs> no. Yes, it is. I will say this, Jamie Roberts and I used to definitely, Jamie. we went head to head a lot. Good, but he left, he doesn't fly anymore. Yeah, as far as I know. 
but you now you're putting back your boots and you're going to compete now. You know he's going to come out of Woodworks. He's, he's looking for you now. Okay, come on. All right, there it is. <laughs> Bring it on, Jamie. It was, it, I would love to see I would love to see Jamie and I would love to see Kyle Dahl again mm. back at like the global stuff. I know he, he did it a couple years ago, but hasn't in a couple years. I really liked flying against those guys. They were fun to compete against. Yeah. I love that. They kept you on your toes is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And Kyle and Dahl and I get along great. I mean, I... After the competition, it doesn't matter if you win, lose. We we got along. See, that's well. awesome. That's a good humbleness about a pilot. You have some pilot like Nick that says, "Oh my goodness, yes, let these guys come because they challenge me. They make me get out there and really focus." Right. And then you have the other pilots that are like, "Damn it, Nick's gonna be there." Oh, you know. So. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I think if you if you want to try to be your best, you have to fly and compete against the mm -hmm. best. So. There it is. Yeah. You heard it. Kyle Stacy too. Would love to see him back, Mitch. All those guys. Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. Oh, uh, he's on. Right. Yep. Okay. They all compete. They all know how to do it. Yeah. All right. They can come back anytime. <laughs> so Nick is calling you guys out. Let's <laughs> let's compete. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That part. He's not really calling you guys out. He's just saying, let's have fun together. <laughs> yes. Like, Absolutely. Here we yeah. So why did you make that face? You went, oh my God. You went 550 KV motor. You on 12 S? Yes. What head speed do you want to run? Uh, 22. Well. <laughs> no, come on, Nick. Give it to me, man. This is like you're geared for like 2,700. 27? Hold on, let me go get my calculator. Sorry. <laughs> you don't ever want Nick to look at your setup and laugh and walk away laughing. No, just, this is a bad moment for me. I didn't know. I didn't look at it. You would ask about what the. So, 550. Let's say nominal voltage. He's doing real math. This is not an app he's using. He's pointing decimal points and. <laughs> yeah. You can turn 20, 27. With a dead battery, you can turn 2700. Okay. So I need. Well, maybe, maybe not completely that. Here, let's say. Completely realistically, you can turn at least 2500 on a dead battery. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love to wreck motors. So you want to turn his head speed too? No, no, no. I don't <laughs> I do not need to turn this head speed. Yeah. You've got a lot of RPM. I do. I do. But I know that there's a sweet spot. And I, I, I want to be around 22, maybe 23 at the highest on my, you know. Yeah, mine's at 2220. Okay. So. so what do I do? Do I stay with the 12 or do I? I mean, you can go down to a 10. What? So when you want to order pizza. You have the driveways. Right, so what, 30 minutes, 40 minutes? Uh, it's 25 to Papa John's. Okay, so you're not getting pizza delivered? No, you can't get anything delivered. Damn! The Walmart is 15 or 20 minutes away? 15 minutes. Okay. All right. It's, we're out here a little ways. Yeah, because I thought like after the interstate we'd make like maybe one turn or something. Uh -huh. It's like, nope, a few more. Nope, keep going. Yep. Dead end, all right, make a left, all right. Yeah, keep going. You turn left to the banjos and then... Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a, a bunch of uh, goats to yeah. my left. You came down, probably, you came down 231 and then turned right onto Oakwood. That sounds right, but you could have told me the other way. That's it. That sounds right. There you go. Now you got to try Okay. Things. Okay. In a couple weeks, a whole, a whole video on all this is going to be, I'm going to upload on like okay. from zero, zero to full. Okay, and this is on the 760? Yes, 760 oh. and 69Z, which is the same as this. Okay, so so you're gonna do this next week? It should be out by next week, yeah. All right, cool, I'll it, wait. It's basically taking a brand new transmitter and a brand new gyro. Mm-hmm. And from- Setting it up. Completely zero That's to beautiful. Radio beautiful. Clock. So what we can do is let's just load my radio program in here. Okay. Radio. Yeah. And then it's done. Okay. And then whatever you don't like, you can change feel-wise. Let's do it. All right, cool. Cut.
No, you don't have to. <laughs> if you're not feeling it, don't let him pressure you. <laughs> I love the blade stop. It's the ball, man. <laughs> It's good. It's good. It's really good. God, I lost it. I don't know. I actually didn't blade stop it. Yeah, I threw Mother Nature's out there. Damn, Nick. D2, part two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. 
Hey. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you for all the information you gave us. Thank you for the Futaba uh, setup systems, uh, settings, and tips, no all problem. that stuff. So yep. you we appreciate you. Yep. Any any Thank famous you. last words? Uh, no. Check out XL Power at HeliDirect. They got Futaba. They got all this stuff. So see everybody look flying cool. There it is. Awesome. Direct!